Sorry, the intake's on the top, the exhaust is on the bottom. You can see how bigger the intake valve is. So when it faces this way, it needs that clearance of that big port valve when this actually pumps back and forth the valve springs. So you can see there, so when it hits it, it needs a wider clearance than the exhaust, correct? So that means when it's facing again like this, coming in from this back end, it's gonna be joined together. This intake valve is supposed to be turned over to the bigger uh, on top. So let's go ahead and uh, twist it up there. We're gonna pull it out all. So we have to put our rings in there. I mean, not rings, but our uh, our wrist pins, uh, C clamp. So this is supposed to be this way right here. Just wanna give it a twist so you can see it. See there? That's where it's supposed to be. Even though aesthetically, I don't like the idea of having something engrave it upside down. Sometime, if it comes that way, engrave it like that, you'll have to make sure you face the arrow downward. So that's what it would have been. It would be the wider intake on top and the narrower, uh, I guess you can call it like a, a half circle uh, exhaust or bowl. It looks like more like a bowl um, on the bottom. Okay, I call our uh, pretty much our manufacturer slash distributor. He said to actually, if it was very tight fit here, you can definitely take a mallet hammer, but also recommend it to loosen the bolts as well. So we're gonna try to see if we can actually get the cylinder housing sleeve just to go in without uh, taking the crank case apart again, meaning loosen it because we already put some nice gasket and we already torqued at the spec. And it's just gonna be a little bit of a detour, but let's see. Um, so we're gonna softly hit again with the mallet hammer. There we go, we got our mallet hammer. And we're gonna go ahead and pre-put the gasket and everything. Just assume that it's actually gonna be a straight good fit. And then we're gonna have our uh, piston, everything ready to go. Again, facing this direction, now that we found out. So, our chain is not on this side. I don't think there is gonna be a chain on this side. So, it's engraved with that way from the manufacturer. I just wish they would actually put it where it engraves, you know, reads up like normal. But we have to work what we have, so. That should there we go. Put this here, get the focus back on. It looks like it's swimming. Okay, we're gonna put this side here. We won't be needing this side of the crankcase for a while. Or probably not. Because we already have the studs and everything from this one. I'm gonna go and position this that way you guys can see a better angle of it. Alright, let me move it back a little bit. Okay, pretty good position. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go and get these bolts right off. And the washers, of course. Get them aside. This is the fun part, actually assembling the new head uh, unit. We call this the head cylinder area. Get the washers. Should be four washers. Four of your 12 millimeter uh, lug nuts. Okay, we got the dowel pins already in there. Now the next step is to actually get, remember the gasket that we made earlier? <laughs> Wanna blow off any debris that may be just kind of flowing in there. And so here it goes, here's our gasket here. We hung it up quite, quite nicely here. Uh, it's actually still pretty sticky. So we're gonna have to get, put some gloves on when we're touching our gasket, make sure none of our uh, fingerprint oils in there. So, it's hanging up here for a second. Set the camera back here, that way you guys can see it. See if I can get a position where you can see almost everything here. In the top view, okay. Try to bring this back a little bit. <clears throat> magnet so everything magnetized. that's why we put this here so we don't lose our screws this is magnet on there so the top part's not magnet but nice have okay there goes our gasket here all right 
So I'm going to get some gloves. We're working with our gasket again. And our gasket, even though it's been almost cured for, we didn't really do anything for 24 hours with the gasket, it's still pretty sticky. I'll show you how once I get the gloves on. Do a good blow in your gloves there sometimes. Even though they got the white powder to help you fit it in. So then you can extend it out. There we go. These gloves fit great. It's almost my whole arm. Okay. <sighs> yeah, when you're working with gaskets and everything else that you don't want to get any oils of your fingers on there. Let's get to get, get some disposable gloves. Also keeps your hand clean out of the way. Okay. Okay, there we go. You can see here. If I touch this gasket, you can still see how it's kind of sticky. It's not sticky as much as compared to when it was first sprayed on there, but it will definitely do. We just know the thickness of it. Uh, but the stickiness helped a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go and cut the, the tie strap because we won't need this tie strap anymore. You can see here the broken area still is there. There we go. This will be compressed further because again it's doubled up anyway. So we'll be okay. And it goes only a certain direction again. Just keep in mind that the long nose part, this part right here, goes down. So actually the breaking point is going to be facing uh, pretty much to the crankcase itself. So this is the direction it goes. This one right here goes right there. See it has a little hole here. This is your oil hole. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Beautiful gasket. It's got that nice color, that copper color. Originally it was just, I believe, it was one of them was green, the other one was like a charcoal black. And the green one in the crack area, you can still see it shows. Okay, you want to beat your chain carefully. Beat it through it. Just kind of pinch that tie strap that's holding it. So the tie strap is so useful. Lift up the chain guide, go ahead and remove these uh, cylinder housing studs that were on there previously so we won't lose them. Those are ready to be taken off. And we already pretty much um, screwed in tightly our stud. You do want to go ahead and torque these down, the stud, next time. Uh, just don't keep on twisting them, but we wanted to see, make sure that we hit the groove area. Because uh, on the previous video, we showed you what happened when you over tighten the studs. It can actually break uh, the, the end of the housing in the crankcase area, and that is not a good fix, especially if it's inside the crankcase, not outside like the, the patch that we did here on the, the bearings. Okay, so there we go, it's going in. See there. Okay, and then they're also, it's gapped enough for you where you can actually put it over the dowel pins. See, there's, that's good spacing. There we go. Go. Now we're not putting any pressure yet on to this gasket. We're going to let the housing, when it gets close, uh, do that. So we're not going to damp it down. The reason why is we don't want it to, we want it to be able to expand a little further. So if it needs to, it's going to expand. And once we get our housing, uh, pretty much our, let's say, our skirt really, our cylinder housing skirt to go in a little bit further, we're going to go ahead and um, pretty much. Uh, force it in there. You can see here, we force it in a little bit, a couple of slight, you know, great, but they're not anything like permanent scratches or dents. You know, not even this one right here. So it's just, a, it's good that it's a tight fit, that way we're not losing any compression. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this out a little bit. The reason why is you want to be able to get your wrist pin hopefully back in there. Very good fit. Okay, kind of wobbling it slowly out and out of it. Okay. Oh, well, I took it all the way out. That's not what you want. But okay, if it's already out, we just kind of put it back in there. Okay, we're going to make sure we check our clock pins again. One's the, me the middle one, uh, which is the thickest one, is facing up. And then the thin one's facing a medium thick one. It's facing bottom, and then these two are 90 degrees this way. 
want to make sure there's one right here and the other one should be right there so they're good those ones are good I'm sorry you can't see it so there's one right there Let's see if I can get the resolution so there's one right there and put my finger on it and then the last one's right there in the bottom you can see them the thickest ones in the middle and it is right there there's a gap and then the gap for our bottom one is right there with the number so we got it there okay now it's time to put this one back where we promised it so again this is going to be facing this way so the arrow is going to be facing downward so we're going to put the arrow downward so that's what we're going to do when we reset to take this in there we're going to position it so you can see it Get a better view there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and squeeze. It shouldn't be too hard. There we go. See, we got back. Might cut our gloves again, but there we go. Put a little more in. There we go. It's in. Wasn't too bad. Once you do something once, you get confident. You'll be able to put it back in a little easier. But every engine is a little bit different. Okay, right now we're going to put a wrist pin, make room for it. This wrist pin looks like it doesn't even want to go in. Okay, only because it's precise, it needs to be gapped out a little bit further. There we go. Okay, we got the wrist pin in there. We're going to put our C-clips on one side of it. Um, we actually need to put it through here, I apologize. We're going to put the C-clip still on one side of it. With the wrist pin on it because the wrist pin indicates how far it's going to flush in there it goes our seat clip i would call these g clips but they don't have that little extra um, uh, notch there but they work the same function it's just these ones they figure sometimes people don't even use that little notch they just pretty much grab them from one of the, the ends of it and kind of bend it inward like they're trying to spiral it in so just grab one end uh, whichever you want Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to force, once you put in the housing, force it, and then just kind of, sort of, kind of bend it in like this, kind of bend it in, trying to shrink it, shrink that little big C to a, a small perfect O if you can. So I'm going to do this right here in camera for you. Try grabbing one, and there is a, a place where you can put your, you know, your needle nose pliers to come in. So we, we can use that as a leverage. But where if you notice there, see that we can poke in a little bit more. We're using the wrist pin in there now to help guide us so we don't push it all the way through the out. There you go, I got it in. See the wrist pin almost wanted to force itself out. Only because of C clips here. And almost there, but I think now we can use the wrist pin. You can see it here. See that right there? It's a little bit on off of one side. So what we're gonna do is push the wrist pin, make it make it align. There we go. There we go. We got one area aligned there because the wrist pin helped us align it. And then what you want to do now is actually if it's in there, it only takes a little bit in there. There's a little curvature that you can use this needle nose pliers and kind of like play with the curvature. But or just take a thin, thin flat head. You want to see where it's resting in the housing. You want it to barricade this little area right here as well. So what you need is take your little flat head and just try to get into the groove. Not sure why they did this. Oh, it's actually, see here, it's already barricaded a little bit right there. So we did it. We got our job done. See there. Yeah, let's show you. See, it's already barricaded. There we go. Here's the light. Yeah. It's wrong. It prevents the wrist pin from slipping out. Very secure that way. You don't want to take anything too sharp and mess around with it too much. It's a, it is a, a aluminum. All right. So we're going to take this out a little bit sh slowly. One side. Again, this is going to come in from here now. So we're going to go in and twist this here. That way you can see it. 
we're going to be extending it out so that way we can actually force it in so it's in the right area now so we're going to go ahead uh, make sure our dowel pins in there make sure our gaskets in there first make sure our chain uh, it's going to be lifted through also our upper chain guys lifted up into the proper slot and then i think we are ready let's give it a good blow for i need to breathe okay we're going to feed in our chain guide next step here see it now I always have to remind myself to move the camera angle where I was last at so sorry about that there you go now you guys can see it I was just saying that make sure you got your gasket in here and make sure you got you know one of your wrist pins a set lock ready on the other side if you're gonna do it this way and make sure your chain guide and everything's lifted up and then also make sure your chain goes through This is the fun part, getting the cylinder head on. Oh. Keep on slipping. Go right through. There we go. So you can see I can lift the upper chain guide uh, just with my uh, tie strap holding onto the chain very tightly. Okay, I want to make sure it fits in there. This is where some assembly lube will help. So let's go ahead and put actually some assembly lube on here. We also want to get some assembly lube on here as well. You can actually use the same motor oil and put on there a little bit of motor oil, but I think assembly lube would be better. It's, assembly lube has what's called like anti-seize, so it prevents it from actually causing the metal to actually bond with the aluminum where it's not supposed to. And again, it gets this, eventually it gets weared out. If it's on in motor oil, it'll precipitate out. So we're just gonna put a little bit. We're going to put a little bit right here on the sleeves to help us slip it in. There you go. That's all you need. Just a little bit. You need to smear it. Smear it well. Simile lube here. You can even put some on the piston rings here because it's eventually going to get onto the other one as well. Okay. And normally 